Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today we're going to take a look at this guy. Sony's Z150. This is a very interesting camera precisely because I didn't think it was going to be an interesting camera until I got it and spent time with it. Thanks guys at Sony for giving me the loaner. I will get it back to you soon, I promise. I think of this as the offspring of Sony's RX10 Mark III and their FS5. Now, this was uninteresting to me because I think I had a well-established notion in my head of what a non-interchangeable lens camcorder is about. But I'm here to tell you that that is an outdated notion. So if you have that notion in your head, hold it in abeyance, take a look at this, listen carefully because this is much better than I thought it would be, much more useful than I thought it would be. Let's talk about why. On the one hand, it's got the same sensor as in the RX10 Mark III, which happens to be the same sensor in the RX10 Mark II. If you want to get into the details, let me spout a couple of names. It's a 20.1 megapixel, one inch stacked CMOS backside illuminated sensor. Okay, fine. What does that actually mean in practice? In practice, it means it held its own pretty well against the Sony a6300 and the FS5 in the Goldilocks review I did several months back. Check it out. In fact, up to ISO 6400, it was fine as far as I'm concerned. It gave away about a stop of low light sensitivity, maybe two, to the 6300. Uh, the FS5 wasn't as good as the 6300. In fact, I think the 6300 and now the 6500 have the best APS-C sized sensor in the line at Sony up through and including the FS7. Okay, so that and the integrated form factor make this very much son of, daughter of, spawn of the RX10 Mark III. Uh, why is it also the progeny of the FS5? Well, it's a dedicated camcorder, and that's really nice. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, it doesn't have a recording limit. It will not overheat, and right now I'm recording on the A6300 with the firmware update uh, in 1080 because it just shut down on me after uh, recording for a while in 4K. I have a pet theory, I've shared this with Mark Weir, that it's actually because I'm using the uh, remote, I'm using Wi-Fi constantly, and that accelerates the, uh, the heat rise. Anyway, so you don't have to worry about that with a camera like this. You know, it's got vents, it's got a fan, cool. You don't have to worry about carrying a, a field recorder, an audio recorder, as long as you're limiting it to two channels because it's got them built in, right there. Like the FS5, unlike the RX10 Mark III, it has a built-in neutral density filter and it is really hard to go back to screw in filters once you've had neutral density internal. Now, it's not electronically variable like the FS5, but I don't care, really. I'm so happy to have these internal NDs. What else? Well, this. An articulated EVF. What really hit me while I've been experimenting with the Z150 is just how terrible all of these guys are in daylight if you're shooting from a low angle, uh, even if you're not shooting from a low angle, because, okay, fine, you've got the uh, LCD rear panel. It's useless in bright daylight. And I found myself shooting like this with this camera in daylight, actually with the 6300, when I was trying to do comparisons. Uh, I love this articulated EVF with the big eye cup, which I haven't put on here. Uh, the lens is much sharper than I imagined. I would say it is at least as good, and I think it's actually better than the 18-105 to that was on the Sony FS5 I used 
when I recorded uh, uh, a live event, a presidential rally back in April. So what's really interesting is the idea that this would actually be as good or better a camera for me for live events than the FS5 with its interchangeable lens. Uh, so there are things that I don't like about it. Oh, one thing that I do like about it now, and it's gotten a little bit silly, but not really. It has real ports. It has a full-size HDMI port, and it has a real 3G SDI port. Why does that matter? It matters because the uh, micro, not mini, the micro HDMI ports on the uh, 6000 series camera and the 7, 000, uh, 7 series cameras are terrible. They're terrible. I hate them. It's very hard to keep a connection. But, okay. What are the things about this camera that I don't like? Well, it really mostly comes back to the lens, which again is very sharp, very contrasty, has a wide range, 29 millimeter to 384 full frame equivalent, which is less than the 24 to 600 millimeter range on the RX10 Mark III. I like that RX10 Mark III range, my God. Now, I don't mind giving up some top end, uh, 384 versus 600, I, I can live with that. But the difference between 29 millimeter and 24 millimeter to me is significant. And I wish that they would go down to 24 millimeter. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about this camera is it's got the LCD panel over here. That's cool. Uh, you can turn it upside down if you want to do selfies with this. I don't know why you would. But what's problematic for me is this. Not simply that the menu button is only on top, but that it's very difficult when you're actually in a shoot, to, for me anyway, to figure out which one of these buttons is the one that I want and pushing on it. They need to be raised or somehow uh, made to work more positively. XLR inputs, they're great. Buttons all over the place, it's great. The handle uh, is not uh, a handle or a grip like the FS5 or the FS7. It presumes that you're shooting like this. Uh, and that's fine, or of course like that. Uh, and that's fine. I have no problem with it. In fact, this actually feels more comfortable uh, for me. The uh, buttons fall to the fingers more easily for me on this than either the FS5 or the FS7. So the comparison that I did was this camera versus the A6300. The A6300 in 4K 8-bit 420 and this camera the 10-bit 422 HD. Why? Because 4K to 4K, the A6300 is going to be better. It's just kind of the end of the story. But what happens when you get that XAVC L codec with 10 bits and just a richer color space? What happens? Well, let's take a look. I already knew what to expect from the sensor in the Z150. It's the same one in the RX10 Mark III, and I tested that against the Sony A6300 and Sony's FS5 a while back. It punches above its weight class, giving away very little to the A6300, which has, I think, the best APS-C sensor in Sony's lineup up through and including that found in the FS7. But the difference between 8-bit 4204K and 10-bit 422 Full HD disappears on normal devices. At 4K both, the 6300 is going to be slightly better. Now, really, it's a function of my incompetence uh, in understanding the picture profiles or not putting the proper matte box on the 6300 to explain changes that you'll see throughout this footage. And I just need to get better. Now, at 10-bit 422, the Z150 has beautiful imagery, but so does the 6300 at 8-bit 420. And do you really need S-Log? I don't know. Okay, so were you as surprised as I was? I mean, we shouldn't be surprised, right? That RX10 Mark II, Mark III, one-inch chip is great, but the 6300 is awesome. Bottom line is 
when you're shooting outdoors or you're shooting a well-lit internal scene, the differences uh, between those sensors diminish. They're using the same codecs, the same bit depth, so it shouldn't be surprising that they come that close. What might be a little bit more surprising is just how sharp the uh, integrated uh, lens is on the uh, uh, Z150 because the Sony E 50 millimeter F 1.8 is a really sharp lens and the Sony 90 millimeter F 2.8 is one of the sharpest lenses out there. Uh, and the Z 150 uh, comported itself exceptionally well. This is really a great package. In fact, I've been looking for a third camera and this is above what I want to spend on a camera. There are so many other things to spend money on including uh, plane tickets. Did you see my 2016 travel camera of the year review? Plane tickets. But upgrading the hard drive, upgrading the processor, getting more lights, getting different audio, getting light modifiers, hiring additional crew. There are so many other things. I, I can't bring myself to spend this kind of money on a camera. And, and that's an interesting hole at the moment in Sony's lineup. Because for those of us who want to have three camera shoots, and I do, I've done two camera shoots, I love them. When I was with Doug Jensen, we had a three camera shoot. Oh, that was awesome, an FS5, an FS7, and an F55, holy moly, I love that. But hey, we get ambitious as we achieve and we want to do more. The problem is, that I want another camera that I can shoot in 4K that I can use remotely that won't overheat. And right now, in order to do that in the Sony line, oh, and by the way, not have a 30 minute time limit, I need to go into an FS5 or something like this, the Z150. So. I would have said, even as I started, and I did say to myself, even as I started using this camera, yeah, this is a really good camera, great for events, but uh, eh, it's not really for me. I'm not the target audience. My thinking has evolved. It's gone from a, this is not for me, to uh, this is not for me right now, to, wow, this really could be right for me if it were at a different number. So I think that's uh, the big challenge. Now, why do I have these other cameras here? Okay, well, this is why. The Leica 3A, this is very much like the camera that Henry Cartier-Bresson, Henri Cartier-Bresson used. This 1D, mine, I can't get rid of it. It's a four megapixel camera, but I love it. I can't get rid of it. GoPro, video recording, you know, in the palm of your hand. And then of course the A6000, the point of all of these. Oh, and one other camera, where do I, where is it? Where is it? It's right here. This guy. The Apple 7 Plus. We don't need a lot of camera to take great photographs and capture great footage. We need to know what we're doing with the gear. And we need to have great vision and courage to capture stuff that's meaningful. Anyway, all of that is a long and perhaps mildly histrionic way of saying, yes, it's about the gear, but no, it's not about the gear. It's about the person. And uh, one of the things that's also interesting is that Doug Jensen and I have been going back and forth on this whole S-Log, Da Vinci Resolve kind of thing, and I've got more coming up on that. But I shot 10-bit 422 on this camera, and I shot 8-bit 420 with no picture profile on the A6300, with, oh, by the way, I was using picture profile 2 on here, which is 
stills. So I was trying to get apples to apples. I shot uh, anyway on the 6300 with no picture profile with the pop uh, picture effect. I looked at the other picture profiles and I actually shot for the first time a little S log. By the way, there's no S log on here. That's very interesting. Actually, it's less interesting because of the conclusion that I think I'm reaching with Doug's help, which is that if you don't have 10 bit, there's no point. But if you only have 8 bit, you can get damned close to graded S log. Now, that's easy for me to say because I am a for crap colorist. I'm, I'm not a colorist. And so my skills with uh, tweaking S log are essentially non existent. Uh, but if any of you guys have comparisons, not of S log before and after you apply LUTs and grading, but S log after you apply grading to internally recorded no S log, you know, one of the picture profiles that's in camera. I would love to see that. I think that would be really educational. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit off track. Let me summarize. This camera, Sony's Z150, is a much, much better camera than I would have anticipated. In the end, the only thing that I wish it had really uh, are uh, a function, the things are a function of the fact that this is a non-interchangeable lens. I wish it were a little wider at the wide end. 24 millimeter full frame equivalent would be just fine for me. Uh, and I wish it had a wider, faster, constant aperture capability. Uh, F2, baby. Because remember, with uh, a one inch sensor, there's what, a 2.7x crop? So you have to multiply the maximum uh, aperture by that factor to get not uh, a full frame equivalent of light, but a full frame equivalent of depth of field. And so you can navigate around the much greater depth of field that you get with a camera like this by having it wide open and using the telephoto. But uh, yeah. Anyway, Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and Elephants. See you next time. If you found this helpful or enjoyable, please like, subscribe, check out the blog, check out Facebook, go to Twitter. Yeah, do you really want to do all of that? YouTube is fine. CMOS stacked, side illuminated, backside illuminated, upside down illuminated sensor. <laughs>